Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about how thyroid antibodies, specifically the antibodies associated with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, how those antibodies progress over time. I'm going to be showing you um, a graph of really what it looks like if you do nothing with Hashimoto's, what happens to your antibodies, when they spike up, um, what that means for your body. And then also we're going to talk about a better scenario. And that is one in which you are taking advantage of the natural therapies that are available to you to prevent the damage from Hashimoto's. And I'm going to show you what that looks like and how that impacts your antibodies as you go along as well. So if you don't already know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist and I specialize in treating patients with thyroid conditions, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. But today is about the thyroid. More specifically, it's about Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Don't let this confuse you, by the way. I'm going to explain it. It's going to make a lot of sense. So um, it may look a little intimidating at first, but it will make a lot of sense. And as I mentioned initially in my introduction, we're going to be talking about Hashimoto's antibodies. So what that means for you is that we're going to be talking about the levels of antibodies in your blood, in your body, over a period of time. We're gonna be talking about what happens to those antibodies, how they shift, how they change around, and what that means for you and your thyroid gland. Now, the antibodies we're gonna be talking about include thyroglobulin antibody and uh, thyroid peroxidase antibodies. These are the antibodies, these two. Uh, sometimes there's other ones, but um, we'll just focus on these two for now. These are predominantly the two antibodies associated with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now, you do not want these antibodies to be elevated and high in your body. Under most, in most cases and under most uh, circumstances, high antibodies are associated with increased thyroid gland destruction, okay? So the higher your antibodies, the more likely you are to end up with permanent and irreversible thyroid gland damage. Now, most doctors, most patients, I guess, probably understand this concept. What they may not understand is what to expect and how these antibodies change over time and what you can actually do about it. So this first scenario, this is just what we're going to, we're going to talk about two scenarios. So the first one is the person who has not done anything, who doesn't do any sort of natural treatment. What can they expect? And then the second treatment or the second option um, includes what happens to your antibody levels if you're actually trying to lower those antibodies and how that changes your outcome and how you're feeling. So let's first talk about um, the first scenario, which would be people who may not even know they have Hashimoto's. Remember, most people, if you go back to one of my uh, more recent videos I did on the stages of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, most people aren't even diagnosed until they're in something like stage three or so out of five or six stages of Hashimoto's. So it's pretty advanced by the time they get diagnosed. They know they have a thyroid problem, but they don't know they have Hashimoto's antibodies or uh, th Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So let's talk about this group of people. What do the antibodies look like over time? Now on this graph, I have the antibody level here. That's what AB stands for. AB is short for antibody. Um, and I just arbitrarily pick some value at 100. It goes, all, it goes into the thousand. So that's not really important. This is, this is not an exact graph. We're just illustrating a point here. And then at the bottom, we have time. So these are years, by the way. So years. So down over here, we probably have 20 to 30 years. And down here, we have time zero or one year. We'll just start arbitrarily there. Now, what I, have, what I have shown here is over time, the antibodies spike up initially, and this is the time of diagnosis. Now, usually at the time of diagnosis, the antibodies will spike up, but they may not reach their highest level, okay? So just whatever inciting event causes Hashimoto's will cause those antibodies to spike up initially. Now, you may or may not be diagnosed here, by the way, because that's why I'm saying they're not actually at the peak that they may reach, because a lot of people feel kind of crummy here, but they don't feel crummy enough to actually obtain the diagnosis. But they do see the rise in the antibodies here. So over time, in the first year or so, antibodies kind of go up, they, they um, reach some level, and then usually through some inciting event here, which happens again, the antibodies go even higher. And this is when they really start to peak. This is when people really start to notice it. And usually something is causing that. That's why I have this or kind of identified this peak as a flare. Now, many Hashimoto's patients will experience a flare in their antibody levels several times, probably. I can only illustrate three here on this graph over a period of time, but this could be five, this could be 10, this could be 15, just depends on you, and it depends on what things trigger those flares. Now, what happens during a flare is those antibodies, they dramatically rise. And as they rise, as they increase 
over the short period of time, more damage is occurring in the thyroid gland. So you do not want these flares to occur. Now, invariably, they will happen, okay? Things like stress that are completely out of your control may trigger you to have a flare in your antibiotic levels. This could be, for instance, the death of a loved one. This could be a car accident that you got in. This could be exposure to some sort of environmental chemicals or just a buildup of random chemicals that you're running into contact with on a daily basis. Let's say, for instance, that you're a hairstylist or a hairdresser and you're doing all sorts of things with, uh, you're touching um, you know, shampoo and all these different chemicals that are getting into your skin and slowly being absorbed. And then they might reach some critical mass and then boom, you get this flare in your, antibi or in your antibodies and then you feel it symptomatically too, by the way. So generally, as these antibodies flare up for any reason, you will not only feel worse, you'll have more symptoms, but you will also have more destruction of the thyroid gland. That's why you do not want these flares to occur. And again, I've only illustrated three here, but anytime your antibodies level peak, anytime your antibody levels peak beyond which is normal, which you would normally diagnose with, which is like around here, that indicates that you're in a flare. Okay. And again, this could happen several times. Now to sh kind of show what then happens with a normal person, let's say they haven't done any treatment. They maybe are on thyroid medication at some point here. It could usually kind of happens like right around here, maybe at your, you know, let's just say 10. Um, they're, on, uh, they're on thyroid medication, but it's not actually treating or preventing the thyroid gland destruction in this case. So the antibodies peak, they peak a couple of extra, extra times, and then by the time they get to about 20 years or so, their antibody levels happen to start to fall. Now this isn't a good thing, because it just means that there's, you have actually completed the destruction of your thyroid gland, and so the antibodies, level, the antibodies have nothing else to destroy, so they fall and go back down to zero. Now a lot of people don't even get tested until they're right here which is pretty much too late, by the way. I, sh I shouldn't laugh because it's not, not actually funny. It could be your situation, but it is a, a, a testament to just the inadequacies um, of most doctors as it relates to the treatment of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So you should know that this is sort of the general outcome if you do nothing, right? If you did absolutely nothing with your Hashimoto's, this is what it would look like. So let's compare that, by the way, to somebody who is actively trying to treat their Hashimoto's. Let's say, let's see what that looks like. So I have this here. Let me see if I can put that in the screen. Okay, perfect. So we have here the same exact graph. This blue line represents the antibody levels again, but you can see a huge difference here. So look, so in the very beginning, we have the, the same thing happens to both people. They originally get diagnosed with the disease, right? So the diagnosis was here and the diagnosis is here. So they, or, or not even necessarily diagnosis, but the inciting event of the disease. They, they know that something's wrong and the antibodies levels start to peak. Now here is where things take a different curve. Um, in this case, the antibody levels go up because they haven't done anything. This person hasn't done anything to address the immune components of Hashimoto's, but this person is actually doing something about treatment. So here is where you really want to start the treatment if possible. And this is the dramatic effect that it can have on your antibody levels compared to the two graphs. So instead of going up as they would in some sort of flare, in this case, they can actually go down. Now that is really, I'm going to pay to, I'm going to talk about this for a second, but I don't want you to focus on it too much. So generally speaking, if you can, the lower your antibodies in Hashimoto's, the better. And anything that you can do treatment wise to help drop those antibodies, the better you will feel and the less thyroid gland destruction that you may have. Now this isn't a hard and fast rule though. So I don't want you to freak out about it. There are many people, some people, I shouldn't say many, but there are some people who have elevated thyroid antibodies who spike really high, but they don't actually have any thyroid gland destruction. So they're not always representative of thyroid gland destruction, but usually they are. So I just want to throw that out there because somebody I know for sure will leave a comment and say, I have elevated antibodies, but my thyroid is fine. That does happen. It absolutely happens. It's not common, but it does happen. So what happened here that was different between this person and this person? Remember this top person, we'll just call them A and we'll call this person B. Person A didn't do anything to treat the immune, um, the underlying immune dysfunction, dysfunction associated with Hashimoto's. Person B did do some sort of treatment. So what type of treatment did they do? Plenty of things can help lower your thyroid antibodies, by the way. We'll, I have other videos completely on that topic, but things like diet, medications used off label, things like low dose naltrexone, certain supplements can do this. And then of course, finding the root cause, treating things like Epstein-Barr vir Epstein viral infections, um, H. pylori, things like that. So you can do that. And if you catch it early enough and you do this, you'll see that instead of your, antibo instead of your antibodies rising, they will actually go down. So you can see that the antibodies then start to take a dip and they reach some level, which is probably still perceptible or you can actually, you can test for it, but it's very low. So let's say it's 10 to 15. So instead of having, um, you know, way up here at the same time period, let's say arbitrarily it's hundred, it may be in the 10 to 15 range here. So there is probably some low grade damage occurring to the thyroid gland, but nowhere near to the extent that is occurring there. 
Now, again, remember, invariably, no matter what, even if you do all these things, it's still very possible and probable that you will have flares. But, and here's an important distinction, if you have a flare and you're actively treating like person B is, the flares will be much more minor. They will not be the huge uh, you know, peaks that you see up here. They'll just be a tiny little dip right here. So the antibodies will raise above which you are normally expecting, you know, above nor that you, which you normally live at, but they're not gonna be sufficient enough to cause the same damage that occurs with person A. This is the reason that it's so important for you to manage your Hashimoto's as early as you possibly can and to manage those thyroid antibodies. Now, again, like I said, compared to person A, you will have a couple of flares. I've only included two here, but you can see this is a flare, this is a flare, the antibodies go up a little bit, then they go back down because you may have to be a little more aggressive during this time period with the supplements you're taking. You may have to readdress things like H. Pyl H. pylori or EBV infections and things like this. You may have to increase your dose of LDN temporarily. You can manage those flares. You may have to reduce your stress and so on. And as you do, you should see those antibody levels drop again until the next flare, right? Because like I said, sometimes those are completely outside of your control. You can't control it if someone's, your loved one is going to pass or you, like you said, you get in a car accident or something like that. You, you're not gonna be able to control those and they may result in a flare. But what you can do is you can control those treatments which helped lower your antibodies in the beginning. And I wanna say whatever worked for you the first time is likely to work for you subsequent times. So every time you're you know, experiencing a flare, you can go back to these tried and true treatments, whatever worked initially, and they should help you reduce those, um, the antibody levels as well. Now, in this case, we also see a, a decline in the antibody level right here. Um, that's usually because once you get things under control, uh, this, isn't, this isn't the same reason that you see up here. Remember, person A had complete destruction of the thyroid gland due to, due to end-stage Hashimoto's, whereas this person just reduces their antibodies and they stay low. And hopefully, if you can do it this way, you will not ever reach this end-stage Hashimoto's, which means that you'll be in a much better position than person A was. So this is really what is happening and why... Um, really, this is what's happening to patients who have Hashimoto's thyroiditis and their antibody levels. Now, this may not be a perfect representation of you, by the way. So this is just the goal. B is the goal. A is what you completely want to avoid. But you could still have spikes, you know, here or there. Things could be higher. Um, that does happen from time to time. I've treated a lot of Hashimoto's patients and everyone is a little different. But this is the goal. So you want it to look as close to B as you possibly can. So if you have any questions about your antibody levels, what they mean, how they've changed over time, um, leave them in the comments below. And I would recommend that if you have Hashimoto's, you should get them checked at least once or twice a year. I like to do that at least once or twice a year. And I actually keep them in a in a, uh, in a file and graph them out for my patients on it um, when necessary. You don't always have to if they're always negative or low, but you can actually see these um, these flares and these peaks. Um, what I'm As I'm mentioning them to you, you can see them much like this. If you plug them into a graph and just if you have enough values, you can actually see what is happening to the antibodies over time. So do that if you can, because it's actually very helpful and you can look back in time and think what happened at this point? What happened in 2005 or 2012 or whatever year it was? And you might think back and be like, oh yeah, I remember that I had you know, X or Y happen and this explains why my antibodies raise. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you haven't already, make sure you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information just like this sort of stuff here. So if you liked it, um, it'll be very helpful for, for you as a thyroid patient. It encompasses all thyroid conditions, including hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, thyroidectomy, post, post radioactive iodine ablation, and so on. So um, that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise I will see you in the next one.